Siobhan MacDonald. Deputy Speaker, today on International Human Rights Day, I want to focus on uh, my attention on two communities who are at the heart of my constituency. They are the Amadea Muslim community and the Sri Lankan Tamils. Britain's Amadea Muslims contribute greatly to this country, and their belief in police and re- police, peace and religious tolerance is an example to us all, as you would expect from a community whose motto is "Love for all, hatred for none." However, in Pakistan, they. Ve- they, uh, the very same peaceful community continues to be persecuted on a daily basis. It is the only religious community to be targeted by the state on the grounds of faith. In Pakistan, Ahmadis cannot call themselves Muslims and are prohibited by law to vote as Muslims. This state-sponsored persecution has been enshrined into the country's constitution since 1974. On top of this, they are openly declared as deserving to be killed with neither the state nor civic society willing to stand up for Amadis against extremists. Perpetrators are given free reign to attack Amadis, safe in the knowledge that they won't be persecuted for their actions, and in the last few years alone, hundreds of Amadis have been murdered. It's quite shocking to think that the persecution of this community face, uh, faces is enshrined in Pakistani law. It is a criminal offence, punishable by imprisonment, a fine or even death. For an Ahmadi to call themselves Muslim, refer, refer to their faith as Islam, call their place of worship a mosque, or say the Islamic greeting, peace be upon you. And these laws specifically against the Ahmadi Muslims also conflict with the constitutional right of Pakistani citizens to have freedom of religion. The state laws have therefore emboldened other state actors and extremists to harass, attack and kill Ahmadis. They are denied the right to life. Hundreds have been murdered on the grounds of their faith. The deadliest attack on the community occurred in 2010 when the Pakistani Taliban attacked worshippers during Friday prayers at two Ahmadi mosques in Lahore. In 2014 alone, 11 Ahmadis were killed solely because of their faith. And this year, a vigilante mob targeted an Ahmadi family in Gujranwala, setting their home alight and killing three family members, a grandmother and two little grandchildren. No arrests have been made, and Pakistani news channels refuse to air bulletins about the incident. They are denied the right to vote. Ahmadis are disenfranchised unless they declare themselves non-Muslims and are the only disenfranchised group in Pakistan. It is crucial to note that no prosecutions have been brought in relation to any of these murders, nor indeed in respect of any of the killings against Ahmadi Muslims. Civic society fares little better. The Pakistani Urdu press continues to publish fabricated stories inciting violence towards Ahmadis, who are often presented as the root cause of problems in Pakistan. In 2014, at least 2,000 such reports were published. Article 20 of Pakistan's constitution guarantees freedom of religion, and the country is also a signatory to the UN Charter of Human Rights, which makes it obligatory for the government to safeguard the fundamental rights of all without any discrimination based on religion, faith or belief. But it is clear that Pakistan is systematically failing to uphold the human rights of all its citizens. The ongoing persecution of Ahmadi citizens undermines Pakistan's progress and its development and stores up huge problems for the future stability of the country. Furthermore, the state's policy allows extremism to flourish, which threatens the security of Pakistan itself and the rest of the world. What is also clear is that the international community has a moral responsibility to act and apply pressure on Pakistan to abide by international convention and treaties uh, to uphold the human rights of all. The UK government should consider what further steps it will take to ensure Ahmadis have the right to vote in Pakistan. It should think about how it will guarantee that UK taxpayer money will not be used to promote intolerance and extremism in Pakistan. And it should decide how it will raise the specific issue of anti ahmadi laws and corruption that allows extremists to target and murder Ahmadis.